Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to lesson six in our freedom unit. We are reaching the point where the tensions between the British and the 13 colonies are reaching a tipping point. And so our essential question today is what pushed tensions between England and the 13 colonies into open conflict? Uh, that is an essential question you should write across the top of your notes and I will kindly pause as you do so. As always, we review vocabulary before the actual lesson. And as always, I will remind you that this should already be in the front of your interactive notebooks and you do not need to write this down. Our first term is traitor. A traitor is a person guilty of the crime of treason or disloyalty to the government. The king considered the people leading the rebellion in the 13 colonies to be traitors. Our next term is mercenary, a person who will fight for whoever pays them. Um, later on, you'll find out that the British hired mercenaries to fight against the colonists in the Revolutionary War. Our next term is strategy, which is an overall plan for accomplishing a goal that requires specific tactics. One of the things we are going to be learning about is the strategy the colonies had for dealing with the King of England and the British government. Our next term is patriot. A patriot is a person who supported the cause of the American Revolution and wanted America to become an independent nation. I think there's also a football team that may have that name. And then our final term is loyalist. A loyalist is a person who opposed the American Revolution, supported the king, and wished to remain part of the British Empire. And that is our review. You've already written it down. We don't need to dwell upon it. And so we move to our first left side question, which is, what were the intolerable acts? Uh, first question I would ask you is, what does the word intolerable mean? And if you can answer that question, then the rest of this will make a lot of sense. Uh, the next thing I will state, as you see all those things listed on the right side there, uh, you will be relieved to know I am not going to ask you to write those down. Uh, I am going to talk you through them, but I'm not going to have you write them down. What I am going to have you write down is the bullet points that you will soon see materializing on the left side of your screen. King George III was not exactly pleased with the Boston Tea Party. Uh, the British East India Company lost a lot of money, and King George III saw it as a direct challenge to his authority in the 13 colonies. So, like a parent who has been challenged by their unruly children, King George III decided it was time to lower the hammer. And that hammer came to be known as the Intolerable Act. The British East India Company had a monopoly in the colonies for its tea. That tea got dumped in the harbor. The company lost money and it directly challenged the authority of the British government. So in order to reassert that authority, the king wanted to punish the colonists with five distinct laws that were extreme to say the least. Um, so write down the bullet points on the left and I will describe the things on the right that I'm not gonna make you write down. First was known as the Boston Port Act. It basically closed Boston Harbor to commerce until the British East India Company had been paid back for the money lost in the Boston Tea Party. So strike one. The second was the Massachusetts Government Act, which basically took away the right of self-government from Massachusetts. So instead of electing their own leaders, their leaders were now appointed by the king and by parliament, not by anyone who actually lived in Massachusetts. The third was the Administration of Justice Act, which basically said that no British official could be tried for a crime in the colony of Massachusetts if it was believed that they couldn't face an objective jury or a jury that could hear their case honestly. 
which basically gave the British the right to remove any British soldier or official from Massachusetts without facing justice in Massachusetts, taking away the right of the citizens of Massachusetts to hold people accountable for abusing their rights. Now, the Quartering Act simply said that if a soldier knocked on your door and said, I need to sleep here tonight, you couldn't say no. So envision that. Just envision soldiers knocking on your door and saying, guess what? I'm sleeping in your house tonight. And the law says I can do it. You might not be too happy about that. And the colonists were not. And then the most obscure one was the Quebec Act, which basically didn't affect the 13 colonies, but it did affect what later became known as Canada. It removed the right of self-government um, from British North America, which we now know as Canada. And the colonists saw that as a warning shot to them that their own right to self-government was probably going to be stripped away as well. So the colonists were already upset. Um, when these laws were passed, it really started to tear the bonds between the British uh, and the colonists, later to be known as Americans, and really set the stage for what was to come. And with that... I will change slides. This is a rather entertaining summary of the um, intolerable acts. And uh, in class, I might press pause and do a dramatic reading. I don't know that I want to do that on YouTube. So I'll let you look at it. You can press pause. Maybe I can press pause. And whatever happens in class, happens in class. So our next left side question is, what was the first Continental Congress? Uh, keep in mind before I answer this question that the 13 colonies really thought of themselves as 13 distinct and independent almost countries. They did not think of themselves as Americans. So when we talk about the first Continental Congress, we're talking about one of the first organized attempts that all 13 colonies made to get together and come up with a common strategy, notice the vocabulary word, to uh, deal with the British. The Intolerable Acts pretty much pushed the colonists over the edge. They were at this point fed up and they were ready to start fighting back. Um, so the first Continental Congress was called. It was held in Philadelphia. This is before there was a Washington, D.C., because George Washington was still a general and uh, in the military. And it was held in September of 1774. So in terms of your timeline, remember the Boston Massacre was 1770. The Boston Tea Party was late in 1773. This is slightly less than a year after the Boston Tea Party. And remember, you have to factor in how long it took news to travel across the ocean to England and back, which was about three months each direction. So to get a message to England and to get a response back was a minimum of six months. So this, uh, this group, this First Continental Congress, met in September 1774, and all 13 colonies sent delegates to this Congress and its purpose was to discuss strategy for dealing with what the British were doing. They decided to write a letter. Um, they basically decided to write a letter called the Olive Branch Petition. It was written to the king and to put it in language that you might understand, it basically said, dude, you need to chill out. If you chill out, we'll chill out and we can remain part of the British Empire as long as you're cool and you let us kind of do our own thing. We will remain part of the British Empire. We will stop resisting you. Dude, you just need to ramp it down, okay? And um, so if you've ever written a letter to someone important to you, your bae, you know, you put some effort into it, you put a lot of thought into it, you write it very sincerely, you hope that the other person will understand what you're trying to do and will respond to you in a positive way. 
that's pretty much what they were doing. They, they weren't writing a, a letter telling the king where to go and how to fly. They were writing a letter saying, hey, let's, let's lower the temperature here. Let's decrease the tension level. Are you okay with that? Now ask yourself, has the king up until this point done anything that shows any kind of wisdom whatsoever? Probably not. And of course he didn't. So what was the end result? The end result was that the king did not even respond to the petition or acknowledge what was in it. Um, and what he did do was basically let the members of the First Continental Congress know that they were all uh, in danger of being tried for treason and hung from a tree. In other words, shut up and go away. And uh, on the next slide, when I direct you to write your summaries, you're going to see a little video that reenacts how the king's response was read to the First Continental Congress. And uh, as always, I will show that video in class, but I will not do the video inside a video due to technology and copyright issues. But this slide is done, so we move to the next slide, which directs you, as always, to please write a summary. And while this reenactment of the First Continental Congress is playing, your summary should be about three to five sentences and emphasize the most important details of what I just said, pretty much answer each of the two left side questions in at least one or two sentences, and you are, as I like to say, delicious. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, this is once again Mr. Blumendahl signing off on the Waldo Middle School Social Studies YouTube.